Amen. Even with the difficulties. Hey, we can have a uh, couple people hop out and help me get her sermon. Otherwise, you're going to have to listen to me play all morning. We don't want anybody to do that. There's one back there, guys. Other than that, Gus, that's a pretty fun song, though, isn't it? for Z this morning like she prayed for us. God, we lift up our pastor to you. This morning we lift up the sermon. We lift up the words that you would speak to us. We would ask that you would soften our hearts and you would open our minds and unclog our ears. Indeed, be make us malleable. May the worship uh, singing that, that we will hail you, the Lamb, that you will rule in power, that you shall reign because you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. May that that prepare our hearts to hear your word now proclaimed. That is one of worship's biggest and most uh, important functions is to prepare us to hear the word proclaimed. And, and so now, Lord, we make ourselves ready. We ask that you empty Z of herself, fill her with your spirit now, and that we would receive the word that uh, that you've labored in her heart to to bring to us this morning. We give this time to you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Have a seat. Well, good morning, everybody. Well, this is a good sign that my sermon is going to blow you away this morning. How about that? <laughs> well, I am going to get right to it. Um, but 
Turn to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. This morning I want to talk to you about is that God's word has a purpose. God's word has a purpose. And with the world in its current condition, it seems that each week we come together, there is some heavy message that God has given me to preach to you all, because not a day goes by that, ha that does not require God's attention. There isn't a day that goes by that doesn't require God's attention. And if you do not already know what current condition I'm speaking about, all you have to do is turn on the news and perhaps do something as simple as ask your neighbor who doesn't look like you isn't the same color as you, or maybe don't even believe the same way that you do. And no matter where we find ourselves on the spectrum of life, we will soon discover that peace on earth begins with us. Literally every day there's another story about injustice and brutality and racism that we just can't seem to break away from. It seems that with all that is going on, we just have to find ourselves hoping and praying and wondering Dear God, when is all of this finally going to come to an end? Why can't we just go to church and see our families, sing some songs, pray some prayers, hear a wonderful sermon that will blow you away, hear, hear some weekly announcements, and all just go to lunch afterwards? However, the harsh reality is that when we were doing just that, just those very things, just those very things were not just enough. Even when we left the church building, closing the doors behind us, turning on the alarm, it was then when the real work begins, to go into the world to spread the good news and to make disciples. When, we, when will we be able to get back to some sense of human kindness and morality, if ever there was any? When will we ever come to the place where anything doesn't go and reverence for God is no longer an old-fashioned notion, but yet it's something that is realized as a way to bring God glory into the one in whom we live and we move and we have our very being. And to be quite transparent with you, if you allow me, as I was having a conversation with God about what he wanted me to preach to you all this morning, I found myself having as I was praying. I had to repent because even as someone who has committed herself to serve God and his people and to all that is humanly possible to uphold the gospel of Jesus Christ, I just didn't feel like it this morning. I just didn't feel like it because it was because I it wasn't because I don't love God and it, it's not because I definitely don't love God's people, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It was none of that. But it's because my spirit had grown tired of trying to find a different and clever way to deliver God's word and saying the same thing over and over again to Christians who should already, that I feel should already know the love of God. Then as God would have it, the Holy Spirit reminded me that love is not what you say. Love is what you do. Then God spoke again and said, hey, wait a minute. Sermons aren't about what you feel like saying, but you have been chosen as a vessel to carry the good news of what I have given you 
and deliver to my children for a time such as this. Who are you to decide what the people need to hear and when they need to hear it? Have you forgotten the words of Isaiah? Everything I do is intentional and everything I do is for the building of my kingdom. My word will not go out and return void without accomplishing the purpose for which I sent it. At that moment, I had to yield to God and simply surrender by saying, yes, Lord, use me according to your will. I am yours and you are mine. And then the message God wants us all to get this morning is that we are the voices of the Lord on earth as we seek him to help us on our Christian journey. Sometimes we look around and the road looks rough. It seems like nothing matters anymore and it seems like God has left us to our own devices. And sometimes he does if we're not obedient. But the good news is, is that he never leaves us and he never forsakes us. But for those of us who know that we have a Savior whose name is above all names, we have a charge to keep. It's not just the pastor or the lay leader, the worship leader, the Sunday school teacher, but it's all of us. We are the voices of the Lord on earth as we declare God's will in the way we intercede for one another. If we allow ourselves to become slaves to our own flesh, then how will the hopeless find hope? How will the lost find their way and how will sinners come to repent? And most importantly, how will people know that their sins are forgiven? God doesn't want us to give up on one another. He doesn't want us to become weary and tired and decide to walk away in judgment because we have gotten so beside ourselves that somehow we think those who are still seeking are no longer worthy of our presence and our witness. So many times God is waiting for something to be done on earth through those who declare to be his disciples. We are the ones who become God's voice on earth for miracles and breakthroughs by praying his will as we set the holy example of God's love. If we would just open our mouths when God says so, we can all accomplish great things as his mouthpiece. Now, before I go too far, we have to make sure that we know what God has given us to say before we start speaking for him. We can't do this unless we have gone to God ourselves in prayer and have studied to show ourselves approved. We can't go out into the world all willy-nilly, but if we seek God first, he is able to equip us with what to say. Here I am, Lord, for the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. We need the Lord to touch our lips and to put his words in our mouths. If there was ever a need for being God's voice on earth, is right now. Never take for granted the power of the word of God. And remember, Jesus himself overcame the tricks of the devil with the word of God by simply declaring, it is written. Heaven responds to our prayers and good things happen in the spirit realm when we learn how to speak life over everything that concerns us. The hungry are fed, the naked become clothed, the storms pass over, and sinners come running. What must I do to be saved? But all that happens only when we lift up the name of Jesus. We lift up the name of Jesus, not as a banner of self-righteousness to push our own earthly agendas, but with the might that Christ Jesus affords us to be able to do all things through him who gives us strength. We surrender our will for his will. As Christians, we have an advocate called the Holy Spirit whom God has sent to teach us all things, to remind us of everything he has said to us, and for that we are grateful. And for that reason alone, we know that our God, our Lord and Savior, is not for us to keep to ourselves, but rather to share. Perhaps then we, will, we are tempted and when we are tempted to pour, to point our fingers and look at the world and the doers of evil with disdain, we find it within ourselves to pray first, to pray first before we judge, to pray first before we shun, and to pray first before we seek justice. Maybe then the words of our prayers will begin to sound more like praise and thanksgiving rather than questions of why and yeah. lament. 
Yes, my sisters and my dear brothers, I know for sure we still have a very long road ahead of us. I know there are circumstances and conditions that we can't do with rose-colored glasses and just say, well, we just pray about it and it'll all go away. I understand that. But there is something else I do know for sure. The word of God is a powerful weapon against anything the enemy presents. And there is power in the name of Jesus. So when we pray, let's pray knowing that the gospel of Jesus Christ makes a difference. Let us be mindful to examine ourselves and all that we do in order that we can truly say we are Christ's ambassadors and the world we know the world will know that we are truly Christians by the love that we have for one another, the care that we have for one another, the tolerance that we have for one another, and the prayers that we pray for one another. Now here's the wow. God expects us to be his mouthpiece. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and pray so we can get out of this wind. How about that? Lord, thank you for the word that you have given us this morning. Let it penetrate our, mind, our minds and our hearts, Lord. Let us not just be hearers of the word, Lord, but let, help us to be doers. Help us to be your mouthpiece. Help us to be the ones who witness and get the name of Jesus lifted up so sinners can be drawn unto you. So, Lord, this morning we extend an invitation for anyone under the sound of my voice to come and to give their life to Christ Jesus. Let them know that their sins are forgiven and they can be made clean and they can be made whole just the way they are. Just as they are, Lord, they can come to you and know life and life everlasting. So if you need prayer this morning, if you want to give your life to Christ, we're here to accept you. And if you don't want to be a part of the fellowship fellowship, we ask that you be a part of God's fellowship and God's kingdom. And we'll send you wherever you want to go. Our main concern is that you know that you have life and you have life eternal. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Jesus, worthy is the Lamb that was slain for us. Son of God and man, you are high and lifted up. All the world will praise your great name. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, next week, we move back inside. The chairs are going to be spread out in pairs. They are going to be at minimum six feet. Looks like they're about eight to ten feet, some of them apart from each other. Now, if you come with a family and there's more than, than two of you, absolutely. You can, can move a couple of chairs around and sit, sit together, right? And we want to do that. Uh, if you want to come and, and be a part of it, uh, Larry and I will work together. Larry's going to help me. We will make sure that we still have this available here. That, I don't know if anybody will take us up on that offering or not, but we want to make it available if at all possible. We'll still put it on 90.1 if you want to stay out here in the parking lot and still come and get that connectedness from being a part of, of us being here together in the same place here at Eric Fellowship. So uh, if not, we will still continue to do Facebook Live. I know we've had some transmission problems the last couple of weeks as I've tried to go back and view it. Next week we shouldn't have that. We'll be working off of the, the Wi-Fi in the, in the church, and we shouldn't have those, those problems. Uh, we will have hand sanitizer. Uh, we will have masks available. Deborah, do you want to come up and say anything, or am I missing anything? I guess it might be moved just a little bit. Masks, right? Hand sanitizer. Um, the, also the church. Oh, and we will have a temperature scanner. So if you are, we don't want anyone to be missed out. That's another reason to offer the, to offer the uh, radio broadcast out here. We don't want anyone to be left out. But if you are running a temperature of 100.5 or 4 or more, if you're running a fever, uh, then, then we're not going to be able to, to have you in there as part of the, the uh the actual sitting down part. We don't want you to go anywhere. We'd like for you to still be here and be a part uh, a part of the services. We just want you to be safe. If you're having any symptoms, same thing. Be cautious and use care. So we'll have temperature scanner, hand sanitizers, masks. Um, the, the last thing I will tell you is the church has undergone uh, and uh, starting yesterday and will continue to undergo a deep cleaning, even though we haven't been using it. I've been pretty much the only one in and out other than the church secretary in her office during the week setting just to move equipment around. Uh, but we're still doing a deep clean of everything uh, just because it hasn't been touched in a while. So we want you to be safe. We want you to be a part of it. And uh, whatever we can do to facilitate that, um, we're going to we're going to give this a we're going to give this a shot. If we need to move back outside, we got a fan. Not every Sunday is going to be this wind, windy and uh, you can run your air conditioners and we'll We'll have church one way or the other. It's exactly what Z said this morning, one way or the other. His word will not go forth without accomplishing the purpose for which it was sent in the first place. And that's you too. So, anything else? Well, with all, <laughs> with all that being said, I just want to say have a great week. Don't just pray about it. Be about it. Be God's mouthpiece. Go forth and be blessed. Amen. 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 I was going to do the doxology on the way out, but uh, with the wind blowing, I don't want to try to fight it. So if you'll see uh, Deborah and Larry, uh, Lord, we give you praise and thanks for all of the offering this morning uh, to build your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray. All right. Have a great week, guys.